is a presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Arizona. We are set for baseball in downtown Phoenix where the Dodgers have arrived for a three game series. D-backs lost two of three in L.A. earlier this year. So a chance to return the home field favor with Zach Greinke on the mound against his former team. It's the D-backs and the Dodgers on Fox Sports Arizona. Good evening from Chase Field. Welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthume and Bob Brenly along the way. It's the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers. It's the D-backs first visit from L.A. this year. And just to make them feel extra welcome, Bob, it's a former Dodger who gets the ball tonight. Yeah, Zach Greinke taking him out against his former team. It seems like a long time ago this guy was 0-2 with an ERA nearly 10. He's won his last five starts. ERA under two. He has been dazzling on the mound recently for the Diamondbacks. You see that? 5-0 in his previous five starts. The ERA under two. And uh, Zach Greinke will face his former team for the first time after a well, it was an interesting storyline. Certainly his exit from L.A., his arrival here in Arizona. Yeah, we got a glimpse of that on the uh, pregame show today, how he ended up a member of the Arizona Diamondbacks. He really liked the way the D-backs went about their business and played the game, and now he's helping the team play the game the right way. Coming off a shutout of Tampa Bay in his previous start, his first shutout in nearly three years since he was a Dodger. And one of the best hitters he'll be facing in the lineup. They've had a lot of moving parts in Los Angeles this year. But uh, as his brother Clay plays for the NBA championship tonight, it's Trace Thompson, the starting right field. Yeah, understandable if his attention is a little divided tonight uh, as his brother's playing for the NBA championship. Trace Thompson, along with Corey Seager, two rookies that are leading this high payroll Dodgers team. Uh, they're pacing the team in just about every offensive category. Yeah, Carl Crawford release, Yasiel Puig on the DL. So something of a different look for the boys in blue. First pitch coming up from Chase Field on Fox Sports Arizona. Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. By Jack in the Box. Taste the all new double Jack burger today only at Jack in the Box. By Oregano. Step up to the plate for a guaranteed home run at Oregano, your neighborhood pizza joint, location statewide. And by your Valley Honda dealers, where you get more standard features for less money.
Max Baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by Lone Butte Casino. Get in on big wins by Tire Pros. For the best selection of Continental and General Brand tires, visit your local Arizona Tire Pros today. And by Gigablast, 100 times more powerful internet from Cox. Bring on tomorrow. And a chase field, the Diamondbacks set to bring on their ace. Zach Greinke faces his former team. So does Dodger starter Mike Bolsinger, for that matter. The D-backs and the Dodgers. First pitch is next. Up. It was thought to be a two-team race between the Dodgers and Giants. I never thought they would be in the running for the big fish like this. The Diamondbacks don't get the Zach Greinke. That's not what they do. Ken Rosenthal broke the news Friday night that Greinke agreed to a six-year deal with Arizona. This is the biggest surprise for me since Albert Pujols signed with the Angels. The team in one move was able to burn their hated rivals. Not only do you get Zach Greinke on your roster, but I think even as importantly, you prevent him from staying with the Dodgers. And he has been on a roll as of late. Zach Greinke on the mound, set to face his former team, Dave Roberts Dodgers. Two games over 500. They're five games behind the Giants' lead in the National League West. And they are set to face one of their former aces here tonight. And here's how Dave Roberts will line up the Dodgers this evening. The veteran Chase Utley leading off at second base. The rookie Corey Seager having an outstanding season at shortstop. Justin Turner out third base. Adrian Gonzalez at first. Trace Thompson out in right field with Jock Peterson in center. Yasmani Grandal behind the plate. Scott Van Slyke in left. And former D back Mike Bolsinger on the mound. And Zach Greinke is your Arizona forward starting pitcher. He's won his last five starts and pitched 16 straight scoreless innings, coming off a win over Tampa Bay his previous time out. That was last Tuesday, his first shutout in nearly three years. Never better than he was last time out against Tampa Bay. Gave up three singles in that game, all with two outs and nobody on base. He walked two batters. Both were eliminated by double plays. Roof and panels are open. A look around Zach Greinke. Our eye on defense for the D-backs is brought to you by Nationwide Vision Centers. Jake Lamb getting the start at third base tonight. He'll be flanked by Nick Ahmed at shortstop. Gene Segura at second base. Paul Goldschmidt over at first. The outfield will be Peter O'Brien, David Peralta, and Yasmani Tomas left to right. Wellington Castillo doing the catching for right hander Zach Greinke. Jay Sutley will lead it off. Carlos Torres, our plate umpire tonight. He'll call the balls and strikes, and we are underway in downtown Phoenix, Arizona with ball one, and the shift is on for Utley. He's having a very good season at the age of 37, 268 and four home runs. Hey. 
As always, we'll keep a close eye on the strike zone of Carlos Torres behind the plate tonight. That uh, makes a big difference when you have a command and control pitcher on the mound. Zach wanted that one. Didn't get it. Two and one. He either wanted the pitch or he wanted Chase Utley to swing at. It. Could be either one. Well, Utley's doing well. He had three hits last night in their loss at San Francisco. Two and two. Well, the thing about Zach last time out against Tampa Bay as well, he walked two. I mentioned that. He only struck out two. Very efficient, quick contact. Defense was working well behind him. Called strike three. Carlos Torres rings up on the one away. Well, he didn't get the call on the outside corner, so he goes all the way across the plate with a little cutter right on that inside corner for a called strike three. One of the hottest hitters in the LA lineup right now, the shortstop Corey Seeger. 280 and 14 home runs, just 22 years old. Slaps the first pitch foul, 0 and 1. Seeger has homered seven times in his last 15 games. And during that span, is hitting nearly 330. Frankie jumps ahead, 0 and 2. Any particular advantage at all, Bob, in your mind uh, for the Dodgers hitters facing a guy that they at least saw pitch or played behind while he was pitching? I don't think so. I mean, we haven't seen any patterns established by Zach Greinke. He's liable to throw any pitch in any count to any hitter, and guys like that, uh, there really isn't much of an advantage playing behind them because you've seen what Zach Greinke can do, and as a hitter, now it's uh, your job to battle against what you watch from behind all those years, and they should know that he's very unpredictable. One two pitch to Corey Seager is in the dirt and it's two balls and two strikes. Missed away full count three and two. Seager had a series against Atlanta earlier this month. Five home runs in the three game series. He's going to have series like that over the course of his career, it seems certain. He's laced into right field, a base hit for Seager. Base runner for Justin Turner and they're at third tonight. Hitting only 221 with five homers. That OPS is down 200 points from last year. Coming off micro fracture surgery on that left knee in October and likely is not playing still at 100%. Although he says he feels fine, but uh, that's to be expected. Keep an eye on that front leg, that big leg kick. That's this up in the air, deep center field. It backs up David Peralta. They'll play it off the wall. It gets behind him. They will wave Seeger home. There is no relay, and it's 1 nothing LA. Tenth double this year for Justin Turner. Bushing the first delivery from Zach Granke. Uh, David Peralta kind of got turned around out there. Ball hit near the base of the wall out there. He tried to kick save it as it ricochets back to Yasmani Tomas for a Turner double to drive home the first run of the game. Three batters in. D backs down 1 0, and Adrian Gonzalez steps up. 279 and six home runs, but a bad back has sapped a lot of his power. That OPS is the lowest it's been in more than a decade. Hard right in 
to the shift. Segura has it. Turner moves up to third, two down. Dodgers aggressive early in the count against Zach Greinke. Very aggressive early count swinging here from the Dodgers. First time through the lineup. Well, here's the player we highlighted at the top of the show. It's the right fielder Trace Thompson. His brother Clay is playing right now for the Golden State Warriors. They might win it all tonight against LeBron and the Cavaliers. Thompson having a nice season with the Dodgers. Almost 270 and 10 homers. Leads the team in slugging percentage. Second to Corey Seager in his home runs. Nine of those homers have come since the first week of May. He backs overload the left hand side of the infield and there's strike one. Trace Thompson really emerging as a lot more than just a fourth outfielder, which is what many thought he might be when he was acquired from the White Sox last December. But to Carl Crawford, recently designated for assignment and released formally today, Andre Ethier is hurt. Yasiel Puig is hurt. Puig starts a minor league rehab today for a hamstring injury. So they have needed Trace Thompson, and he stepped up and delivered. About Justin Turner. He's one of those guys that always seems to come up with the big hits against the Diamondbacks, whether he's swinging the bat well or not against the rest of the league. It seems like he brings his best A game when he plays the D backs. He has a knack for being a thorn in the side, that's for sure. Trying to strand him at third with two outs, one two on Thompson. Two balls and two strikes. Well, when they release Carl Crawford, that was finalized today. That means LA will eat nearly $35 million still left on his contract. You think anybody will take a chance on Carl Crawford? Because now you get him for a prorated yeah. minimum. I'm sure somebody will be willing to take a shot on Carl Crawford and hope there's still some gas left in the tank. Sure didn't look like it playing for the Dodgers, however. Yeah, that's what they said. They sort of hinted at that. Father Time had caught up with him. He checked, says Brian Knight. Full count three and two. Ball four. They're on the corners with two outs for Jock Peterson now. The thing about Zach Granke when he walks a guy, you never know if he meant to walk the guy or he just couldn't command the ball in the strike zone. Jock Peterson, much more of a free swinger. And maybe Zach felt his best chance was to go after the left handed hitting Jock Peterson rather than Trace Thompson that had a base open at first, so he pitched him very carefully and ended up walking him. Well, Peterson homered into McCovey Cove last night in their loss at San Francisco. 227 and 9 homers. Still a bit of an all or nothing type hitter at the plate. He's top 20 in the majors in strikeout percentage. And he looks at ball one. His home run last night was Peterson's first since May 17th, a 21 game homerless stretch for him. But he hit it into the water last night on the fly. This is a pop up third base side Jake Lamb. Right on the line he catches it in fair territory in Granky strands two but the Dodgers get one. D backs coming up against Mike Bolsinger.
starting pitcher for LA is the former Diamondback now in his second season with the Dodgers Mike Bolsinger one win in four starts a 5.75 ERA and unless he does something drastically different tonight you'll see a lot of breaking balls both the big over the top curve and the sharper late breaking slider very average fastball relies mostly on his breaking pitches to get out. Chip Hales D backs hosting a Dodgers team that comes in having lost two of three in San Francisco this weekend. The lineup tonight. Yeah, all one run games in San Francisco. Gene Segura leading it off at second base. Jake Lamb at third. Paul Goldschmidt over at first. David Peralta out in center field tonight. Wellington Castillo doing the catching. Peter O'Brien out in left field. Yasmani Tomas in right. Zach Granke the pitcher batting eight. And Nick Ahmed the shortstop batting ninth. Gene Segura leads it off against Mike Bolsinger. First pitch swinging in the air center field for Jock Peterson. And he's got it just in front of the warning track. One pitch, one out for Bolsinger. Our eye on defense for the Dodgers brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. Scott Van Slyke out in left field. Jock Peterson in center. Trace Thompson over in right. It'll be Justin Turner and Corey Seeger on the left side of the infield with Chase Utley and Adrian Gonzalez on the right side. Yasmani Grandal doing the catching for right hander Mike Bolsinger. Here's Jake Lamb in the two hole tonight. Dodgers will put the shift on the Dodgers do not shift a lot. They are in fact in the lower third among major league teams in terms of the defensive overshifts but they do load up the right hand side against Lamb. They'll leave Justin Turner the third baseman midway between second and third Lamb 262 and 11 home runs. Very dry evening here tonight as we're used to in the desert and that may affect the grip uh, for Mike Bolsinger on that big curveball. Well, Bolsinger has lost his last two starts pitched well at Wrigley Field earlier this month five innings of two hit ball but lost two to one. His previous start was last Monday against the Rockies. Gave up six runs on seven hits and only five and a third. Two and two. That curveball, the uh, spike is index knuckle up in the air. Occasionally you can see it when we peek into his glove from our center field camera. You might be able to see that index finger knuckle really sticking up off the baseball, really pulls down hard with his middle finger. Down and got it. He laces it to right field, but Thompson is there. Two down. Here comes Goldie. Time now for your Valley Honda dealers. Key to the game. Well, some familiar faces for these two starting pitchers tonight. Mike Bolsinger, formerly a Diamondback. Zach Greinke, formerly a Dodger. Two down for Goldie. Now with a seven-game hitting streak as we begin play tonight. 283 and 11 home runs. You see that Bolsinger fastball approaches 90 with a little bit of a tailwind he might be able to hit 90 but <laughs> generally pitches between 85 and 88 with the fastball. This is blasted deep right center field Peterson at the track at the wall and it's gone. Number 12 and we're tied at one. Party like a chase field pool party. Goldie hits it right out there. Well, you wonder if he was sitting on that curveball from Mike Bolsinger. He knows Bolsinger from his days here in Arizona. He knows he relies heavily on that curveball, and Goldie just absolutely mashed it out there into the pool area. Jock Peterson trying to join the party out there. Yeah, the fence won that battle with Jock Peterson. <laughs> There's something going on up there tonight. David Peralta. The fence is undefeated, by the way. Yeah, did Goldie hit the baseball harder than Jock Peterson hit the wall? <laughs> they have push. Dodgers will have the shift on now for Peralta. 
That is a big time jumbo jack courtesy of our friends at Jack in the Box. Peralta drops it into center. A two out single for David. That'll bring up Wellington Castillo. Got jammed a little bit, just muscles it out there into shallow center field to keep the inning going here for Wellington Castillo. And Bob Wellington looks like uh, starting to perk up a little bit this month at the plate. The power hasn't really been there, but he's already got four two hit games this month. A lot of those hits coming to the left side of the field, right down the third baseline in that 5.5 hole between the third baseman and the shortstop. Constantly looking for something he can pull hard to left field. Strike one. Still looking for that power to return. Wellington's last home run was May 3rd. It's been 25 games now without a homer. One and one. Yeah, we've seen Wellington dealing with uh, something in his left shoulder recently. He slid into home plate against Tampa Bay and collided with the catcher, grabbed his left shoulder at that point, and occasionally when he swings and misses, you'll see him grimace and grab that left shoulder. Way out in front of that one, a ball and two strikes. Boy, the way Wellington Castillo looked down to first base, uh, I wonder if somebody missed a sign right there. Mm. Took an awkward swing at a pitch out of the zone and immediately looked down to David Peralta. I mean, it wouldn't have been a hit and run with two outs in the inning. Yeah, maybe a straight steal. And if you're the hitter and know that guy at first base is going to take off, you might look for a pitch to shoot that direction. Dodgers seem to sense something may have been up as well. Peralta holds it first. That one is in there for strike three. But Paul Goldschmidt gets number 12, a two out solo homer into the pool area. After one, we are tied at one at Chase Field. Team, the man to lead off this inning is his former catcher, Yasmani Grandal, who caught 26 of Granke's 32 starts last year, including that amazing 45 and two thirds innings of scoreless ball. I asked him who has the advantage tonight. He said, Whoever has the best plan. His plan, Granke's plan last year, Yasmani said, was to throw 110 perfect pitches, and he bought into it, particularly with his terrific pitch framing skills. And so that's what the Dodgers are up against today, and they know it. As Zach Greinke is one of the most prepared pitchers in the game. Thank you, Jody. Here is Yasmani Grandal, down 0-1.
One perfect pitch so far for Zach. Jammed him a bit in the air right center. That's Bobby Thomas. One away. Well, here's a guy that always seems to be dangerous against the Diamondbacks. It's big Scott Van Slyke, the right hand hitter. But just one for 18 at the plate this year. He managed only nine at bats the first week of the season before he wound up on the DL with a lower back problem and wound up sitting out almost 50 games. Just came back June the 3rd. So he's playing catch up, as it were. Now in his fifth season with the Dodgers. Van Slyke used to absolutely own Wade Miley. He really did. Carried him around <laughs> in his back pocket. Even in Australia. It was one of those uh, Goldie Lincecum deals. Mm -hmm. Beautiful night to be here at the ballpark. Roof and panels open. First of three. D backs and Dodgers have all three for you here on Fox Sports Arizona. There's a strike one and two. Diamondbacks have the shift on the left side of the infield. Very comfortable night here. Stop at second. Ooh. Just does get back in time. A heads up play by Goldie to run over there and be where he's supposed to be, but Van Slyke has his second double. Pitch up and out over the plate, maybe even out of the strike zone, up and out. Tomas goes right back to the barrier, but took his eye off the ball at the last instant as he crashed into the wall, and this time it's David Peralta's turn to back it up. And Goldie has nothing else to do on that play. As a first baseman, you just trail the runner. Once he tags the bag at first, you follow him to second base. Well, it's a couple of hard hit balls off Zach Cranky to begin the ball game. Here's the pitcher, Mike Bolsinger. Bolsinger, a long look down to Chris Woodward, the third base coach, and we'll see how they want to play this one. Swing it away, 0-1. David Peralt in center field is well out in front of the pool out there. And Peter O'Brien well off the line in left. Don't expect that Mike Bolsinger is going to pull the ball against Zach Greinke. Strike three. Second strikeout for Granke. Two down in the second. And here's the leadoff man, Chase Utley. Second baseman, Chase Utley. Dodgers as a team have been struggling with runners in scoring position, hitting 240 as a club. 176 with two outs and runners in scoring position. And Chase Utley is guilty as anybody. 231 in those situations with two outs and a runner in scoring position. He struck out looking to lead off the ball game. As you might expect, Corey Seager pacing the way. He's hitting everything all the time. And Adrian Gonzalez, always a dangerous hitter with runners in scoring position. But as a team, really struggling in this particular category. Well, you got Seager on deck, so this is the guy you want to get right here with two outs and Van Slyke at second.
You see Nick Ahmed, the shortstop, he's sneaking in right behind the runner Van Slyke, playing almost directly behind the second base bag. And Gene Segura back on the outfield grass in very short right. Cranky's laughing at himself out there. acquired by the Dodgers from the Phillies last August and now back in LA this year got a one year deal in December for seven million dollars and it's really worked out well he's having a good season all things considered he's 37 years old he'll be 38 in December right back to the mound it's off the Granky glove he recovers and throws him out and they strand the one out double bottom two coming up one one ball game the D-backs and the Dodgers One Dodgers D backs bottom of the second inning. Hey, fans, a D backs home run tonight means a free jumbo jack tomorrow at participating jack in the box locations with the purchase of a large drink. Now, if you were watching a game yesterday, you would have collected your jumbo jack today, courtesy of Peter O'Brien, who hit his first home run this season. 424 feet into the upper tank. And Peter leads off the second against former D back Mike Bolsinger. Gets this one way up in the air. And it's going to stay in the yard for Van Slyke in left center. <laughs> that one had re-entry burns on it. Wow. That's Bonnie Tomas. So Brian continues to be very aggressive at the plate. He has not seen a whole lot of pitches since he's come up from Reno. Tomas 264 and seven home runs. Yeah, that ball needed one of those uh, NASA heat shields coming back down. <laughs> oh, and two. Mike Bolsinger, a 15th round pick by the D-backs in the draft six years ago out of the University of Arkansas. 
broke into the big leagues with the Diamondbacks two seasons ago and one and six was sold to the Dodgers prior to last year two and two. Clayton Kershaw will pitch here Wednesday afternoon against Patrick Corbin Archie Bradley Kenta Maida here tomorrow night. Tomas able to check his swing and he's worked the count full three and two. Before calling for that last pitch, Osmani Grandal has one of those cheat sheet wristbands. Possibly uh, the advanced report on Diamondbacks hitters, what pitch to throw in certain counts. Not sure exactly what's on there, but you can see it on his left forearm and referred to it before that 3 2 pitch to Osmani Tomas. Dodgers, for a team that does not shift very often, is uh, enjoying reputation as a very analytically inclined organization. Here's Granke. Boos from the Dodger fans here, and that's countered by many cheers from the Diamondback faithful. And Granky first pitch swing and drives it deep to center field. Peterson backing up, and he's got it under the home run porch. Granky gave it a ride. Three up, three down for Bolsinger. We stay tied at one. Field, D-backs and Dodgers all tied in NL West matchup tonight. Greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. A look around the rest of the division. Chase Anderson on the mound for the Brewers at AT&T Park against the Giants' Matt Kane. That's later tonight. Right now in the first inning, the Marlins and the Padres scoreless at Petco Park. Well, the roof and panels, as you can see, are open here tonight. We've seen some balls. It pretty hard. Ball seems to be flying. One has left the yard. Goldie's homer in the first. That followed Justin Turner's RBI double. So a 1 1 ball game as Corey Seeger leads off the LA third. He singled and scored his first time up. Saw Zach Greinke's reaction after that foul ball straight back. He knows he got away with one that time. Not every pitch is going to be perfect. Although that's what he seeks every time he goes out there to the mound. Throw the perfect game. Well, he sure has been in a groove as of late, Zach Greinke. 
He's won his last five starts, 5 and 0, oh, a 195 ERA over that span with wins over the Yankees, the Cardinals, the Padres, the Astros, and the Rays. Ahead of Seeger, 1 and 2. A three hit shutout last week against Tampa Bay. Struck out 11 Astros in a start prior to that, seven scoreless in Houston. Two balls and two strikes. Frankie says in the past he used to try harder than he was actually capable of playing and a lot of bad things would happen when he did that. So now he says he just tries to do what he does which is locate the ball well mix things up change the sequences out there. Tries to keep you guessing misses with a fastball away and it's a full count three and two and we've talked about this before was that Granke and some other pitchers around the game that he just has such a great feel for reading a hitter's swing and telling from that swing what the guy might be looking for what he might be vulnerable to. Well, Seager draws a lead off walk second walk of the ball game issued by Granke. Make the reaction after the ball four. Justin Turner built the one off the wall in center field to drive home Seeger back in the first. Goes out there again. This will drop in front of Peralta. Seeger puts the brakes on, overruns the bag, but he's back in time at second. So a walk and a single lead off the Dodger third. Turner's seen two pitches and hit the ball hard twice. This one a line drive into center field. Seeger had thoughts about going to third base, but David Peralta got to it quickly and unleashed that throw back to the infield. Seeger had to hit the brakes and get back to the bag at second. So some work to do here. Two on, nobody out for Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez grounded out his first time up, swung at the first pitch. Takes ball one. I talked about the Dodgers' struggles with runners in scoring position over their last six games, plus tonight they're three for 30 with runners in scoring position. As you said, they lost two of three in San Francisco. All of those games were one run games, so that's really cost them. Gonzalez had a good month of May at the plate, but he has slumped in June. He's hitting only about 170 this month. Just can't seem to get it going. He's been battling lingering lower back problems all year, ever since spring training. One and two. thing about Adrian Gonzalez he usually swings at strikes and strikes only and you have to throw quality strikes to get him out but we've already seen him chase a few pitches out of the zone here in his first two at bats. Maybe sensing the stat you were just talking about there overall struggles in these situations could be and you know he recognizes that he's a guy that this club has leaned on over the years in these big situations and maybe trying to do a little bit too much. Frankie gets the strikeout. It's a big one for Zach. That's his third, and that's the first out in the third. Another pitch out of the zone. Here to be the Zach Grinky change up that time. No, actually, that's a slider, a little cut fastball slider down under the bat. Well, right now, his brother Clay is having a big night for the Golden State Warriors. He's hit five of seven threes as of a few minutes ago. Clay Thompson, 23 points. Here's his brother Trace, who walked his first time up. No three pointers here, please. There 
There's the strike going one. Dodgers still without Yasiel Puig on the DL with a left hamstring strain. He is scheduled to start a minor league rehab assignment today and will likely miss another week. So we'll see how the outfield shakes up in L.A. when Puig comes back. Dave Roberts has hinted that once Puig returns, the outfield will likely be Trace Thompson in left, Jock Peterson in center, and Puig back in right. They are, of course, still without Andre Ethier who fractured his leg in a spring training game against the Diamondbacks at Salt River. And Ethier might not be back before the All-Star break. Yasiel Puig in Rancho Cucamonga. I wonder if he flew his helicopter in there. <laughs> One and two. Good late tailing action on that pitch. It's a just to the very corner. That outside part of the plate. Yeah, Puig is at Rancho Cucamonga with that left hamstring, but uh, rumor has it he's it's more of a mental break for Yasiel. He got off to such a good start this year and was hitting the cutoff man and running out everything he put into play, but that quickly went by the boards. And Dave Roberts insisted he was going to give Puig a clean slate. Didn't matter what happened before. Castillo trying to get together with Granky now. How do these two seem to work together for you, Bob? Yeah, most of the time, pretty good. Uh, when you get runners at second base, every catcher has trouble with pitchers. Uh, once you shake off that initial sign, if you don't know exactly what the guy wants to go to next, uh, that's when you get a little bit of a delay. And uh, they've even gotten much better at that. But a big situation in the game here, and Zach has an exact idea in his mind what he wants to throw, and Wellington didn't get to it quickly enough. Seeger at second, Turner at first. That pitch misses inside, and it's two and two to Trace Thompson. And with more experience, it, it almost becomes second nature. You know, if you have a guy with a one-two count, runner in scoring position, a right-handed batter with some pop in his bat, what does he like to go to in that situation? And eventually it just becomes second nature. 2 2 is fouled off. But that's part of what makes Zach Greinke so good is because, as I mentioned before, he doesn't really pitch in patterns. He's not locked into any particular pitch in a particular count to a certain kind of a hitter. He might throw anything. It's got to make it more difficult for Wellington, I would think. Yeah, very much so. Greinke at 50 pitches, 30 strikes. Check. Nope, they ring him up at home plate. Carlos Torres says strike three. That's four strikeouts for Granky. Trace Thompson would like a word. Center fielder. Johnson. Slider again. A little cut slider. I thought Thompson got away with one in his first at bat in the ball game. Rung up by the home plate umpire Carlos Torres this time. So Granke walked Seeger, gave up a single to Turner, but he's now punched out Gonzalez and Thompson. So with two on and two out, it'll work to Jock Peterson. Peterson popped up to third his first time up. Pops up again, first pitch swinging, right behind the mound. Ahmed's got it. A leadoff walk, then a single. Granky strands two. He keeps it a 1 1 ball game. Pool party at Chase tonight.
Bottom half of the third inning. Hey fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Nick Ahmed set to lead off the third against former Diamondback Mike Bolsinger. 1 1 ball game. Justin Turner, an RBI double in the top of the first. Paul Goldschmidt, a home run in the home half. Goldie's 12th of the year. Nick Ahmed begins this series with a six game hitting streak. He's at 221. As you can see, Nick did his share of damage in L.A. back in April. A couple of home runs at Dodger Stadium. As a matter of fact, over his last 13 games against the Dodgers, Nick's a 432 hitter with five <laughs> homers and 11 driven in. Dodger killer, Nick Ahmed. Yeah, the average, not really a big surprise. A guy can get hot against another team, but the home runs are a little bit of a surprise. Well, Nick has got more pop in the bat than we really see a lot of it's in there he had nine home runs last season but he so often hits with that two strike approach you don't see it a lot one and two old singers retired the last four he's faced That one got away from him. Two balls and two strikes. He did not go. Ryan Knight at first, full count three and two. That big loopy curveball, and it's a strikeout for Bolsinger, his second. Puts it on the inside part of the plate, even though his catcher set up on the outside corner, but thought it was too close to take. Can't get a piece of it. So five in a row set down by Bolsinger. Here's the leadoff man, Gene Segura. Swung at the first pitch and fly it out deep to center. Segura has hit safely in four straight games. He had five hits in the series against the Marlins over the weekend. Breaking ball is in there for strike one. Dodgers were suffering so many injuries with their pitching staff in spring training. Mike Bolsinger got their fifth starter spot, but then he got hurt. In fact, that same day they told him he had won the job. Late March, he was warming up for a Cactus League start. Strained a left oblique and had to be shut down. Didn't even start throwing bullpens until last April. Finally activated off the DL in the middle of May. Big cut at that one by Segura. It's two and two. I watch Mike Bolsinger pitch, and I think uh, back to Cito Gaston, who was a great hitting coach and manager for the Toronto Blue Jays for a long time. And he was of the mind that if you face a guy like Mike Bolsinger, you might as well go to the plate and look curveball, because you're going to see a couple of them every at bat. You know, why go to the plate and sit on a fastball in the middle of the plate when the guy's not likely to ever throw one there? He'll show his fastball out of the zone, he'll push hitters off the plate with it. Occasionally, he'll throw it for a strike. But when he needs a strike, he's going to go to that curveball. Well, he has to survive without velocity. 87, 88 miles an hour. 2 2 pitch. He's up the middle. Larry Seeger is there. Two down. Hey, D backs fans, fill out your 2016 insurance MLB All Star game ballot right now. 
at dbacks.com. You can do that on your computer, your tablet, or your smartphone. And you can vote up to 35 times. Vote today, vote tomorrow, vote early, vote off, and the whole thing, dbacks.com slash vote. Two down for Jake Lamb. Jake flied out his first time up. In the air, deep left center field, then Slyke at the track, at the wall, and it's gone! Jake Lamb hits his 12th of solo shot, and it's 2-1 Diamondbacks. There's some of that opposite field power for Lamb. First pitch curveball from Bolsinger. It looked like Jake Lamb was just waiting on it, drove it to the opposite field. This competition between Jake Lamb and Goldie for the home run lead is getting fun. They homer on the same day, yeah. it seems, all the time. Goldie hit his 12th earlier in the ball game to right center field, and now Jake Lamb goes the opposite way for his 12th of the year. And here is Goldie who homered his first time up. There you go. That's another Jumbo Jack, a free Jumbo Jack tomorrow. And Jack in the box. One for Goldie in the first, his 12th. One for Jake Lamb in the third, number 12 for Jake. So make it a double. Borderline strike right there to Goldie. The pitch before wasn't even close to the outside corner. Got the called strike. Goodness. Goldie really swinging the bat well right now. He's hitting 375 in his last 25 games. And he's already homered tonight. Drives this one the other way. It backs up Thompson. And he makes the grab just shy of the wall. Allowed out number three, but the Diamondbacks take a 2 1 lead. Number 12 on the year for Jake Lamb. We head to the fourth. They lead the Dodgers 2 1. Richmond and Jake Lamb have made it 2 1 D backs. The Gig Life High Speed Highlights presented by Cox. Zach Greinke doing his part. After a walk and a single, he got two strikeouts and a pop up to win the Dodger threat. And so we start the fourth with Yasmani Grandal after Greinke stranded two in the third. Grandal flied out his first time up 0 for 1.
Diamondbacks have the shift on. Grandal is a switch hitter. And the left hand side is his power side. That's where he's hit four of his five homers this year. Right down the first baseline. Goldie's got it. One away. That'll bring up Scott Van Slyke. Left fielder, Scott Van Slyke. Van Slyke doubled off the wall in right center field his first time up. Just his second hit this year. He is now two for 19. He's got a beard like a lumberjack and he swings like a lumberjack. There's really nothing smooth and textbook about his approach at the plate. Pops up the first pitch, first base side for Goldie. He's got it in fair territory. Five in a row set down by Granke, and now he'll work to the Dodger pitcher, Mike Bolsinger. Hey, quick inning is just what the doctor ordered for Zach Granke right here. If he can retire Bolsinger quickly, one, two, three inning, get his team back in that dugout and get the pitch count back under control. Only four pitches so far this inning. 56 for the ball game, 36 strikes. Good start, 0 1. Olsing has struck out looking his first time. Painting with fastballs, 0 and 2. Talk all the time about the shutdown inning, and this would be it. Lamb hits the home run in the bottom of the third to make it 2 1. And Greinke trying to retire the side in order here. Make that 2-1 lead stand up. Keep the momentum in the Diamondbacks' favor. And he's got it. Zach Greinke has retired six in a row. He's got five strikeouts and a 2-1 lead. Today's game, we are participating in a home run challenge. Today, every home run in the ball game raises $4,400 for prostate cancer research. And you can make a pledge by going online to homerunchallenge.org. So, with two homers tonight already, we've already raised nearly $9,000 as David Peralta leads off the bottom of the fourth. And for more on David, here's Jody Jackson. Jody. Yes, Steve, and David Peralta, he does have a home run since returning from the DL, but I caught up with him today. He said he is still working on the timing, though, at the plate. In that Marlins series, just one for eight, did have the triple, though. He said his wrist feels great. The strength is getting back in there, but like a lot of guys, when they come off the DL, even if they do have two rehab games like he did at Reno, it takes a little bit of time. Fouls that one off. 
Yeah, David singled his first time up tonight, so he is five for 18 since he came back from the DL. That's a perpetual battle for the training staff and the manager, a player coming back from an injury. Physically, you get to the point where you can do everything you need to do, but that fine timing to be able to wait on pitches, swing at strikes, take pitches out of the zone, that takes a little while longer to come back. Missed 26 games with that right wrist inflammation out since May the 8th. Dodgers have the shift on. Justin Turner, the third baseman, out by second base umpire Sam Holbrook. Diamondbacks had all their left handed batters out here last week one day uh, practicing bunting against the exaggerated pull shift. Just push that ball to the left side, keep it away from the pitcher. Should be an easy base hit. All kinds of room over there right now, that's for sure. Corey Seager, the shortstop, the only guy over there, and he's on the outfield grass. Ooh, you can see the timing issue still biting David Peralta there, and he strikes out three strikeouts for Bullsinger. Coors Light cold hard facts well, as Wellington Castillo steps up to the plate. Diamondback catchers, Bob. I know this is a, your dream stat. They're leading the majors in OPS. Of course they are. <laughs> OPS, of course, on base percentage plus slugging percentage. Yeah, it helps when the backup catcher, Chris Herman, has been absolutely raking lately. Castillo struck out looking to end the first inning his first time up. And 45 runs driven in. More than respectable. Dave Stewart brought Wellington Castillo in here last year when the team was really out of catchers. And Stu has admitted it was out of need at the time. He didn't think anyone with the Diamondbacks could have imagined that Wellington Castillo would put up the power numbers that he's turned in since he's been here. I think it's always been there for Wellington Castillo, but I think the maturity after getting traded a couple times and realizing those opportunities aren't going to present themselves forever, you better take advantage of this one. And he really seems to have made a home here. Acquired from Seattle in the Mark Trumbo deal last June 3rd, shortly after the Mariners had picked him up from the Chicago Cubs. Lays off that one and he's ahead three balls and one strike. You were mentioning maturity Bob that's something that Dave Stewart was talking about with Wellington. He seems to have a better understanding now of what the strike zone is as a hitter. Understands the pitches that he can drive. Full count three and two. Fastball was below the knees, and Carlos Torres rings him up. That was a good take by Wellington Castillo. Left fielder, Peter. He's been oh, called out on strikes Ryan. both at bats in this ball game, and both times a borderline at best pitch. Four strikeouts for Bullsinger and the two down. He'll work to Peter O'Brien. Peter flied out very high to deep left center field his first time up. His fly ball, if the roof had been closed, it might have hit the roof. <laughs> really? So Peter won for 10 since his recall from Reno. One home run and five strikeouts. Got all 
tied up there. He's down one and two. We were talking, Bob, on the Snake Talk radio program after the game yesterday that O'Brien has become must see TV. If he, you walk by and you're watching the game and he pops up, you got to stick with him because you might miss a 470 foot home run. It might be a spectacular strikeout or a spectacular bomb. Bounces that one two and two, but he's got that type of power where you're just glued to the set for the at least that at bat. Yeah, you look at certain landmarks around the ballpark and you say, well, nobody will ever hit one up there, but then you watch Peter O'Brien take batting practice and oh. just you know, try to figure, okay, what if that was a 96 mile an hour fastball that he hit in that direction? And he swings and misses at that one, so Bolsinger strikes out the side in order. Peralta, Castillo, O'Brien. D backs lead the Dodgers 2 1. Top of the fifth on the strength of a couple of solo homers by Jake Lamb and Paul Goldschmidt. Hey, fans, stay cool this Fourth of July inside air conditioned Chase Field. The D backs take on the Padres at 6 10, then relax as the roof opens for a post game fireworks spectacular, courtesy of Gila River Casinos. Truly the best fireworks show in town. Visit dbacks.com. Well, Zach Greinke, who's retired the last six he has faced, will face Chase Utley to lead off the LA fifth inning. How about this Zach Greinke had thrown 41 pitches had two men on and nobody out in the third inning since then he's gotten six outs on 19 pitches efficiency oh that one just went foul for Goldie yeah so now 61 pitches 40 strikes a one two three eight pitch fourth inning he's got five strikeouts he's walked two so far Utley 0 for 2. He has struck out, grounded out. Right. 0 and 2. Shift is on again by the Diamondback infield. That's Jake Lamb way over there at second base. Frankie seems to be uh, talking to himself out there, trying to figure out what to throw. <laughs> well, this is one of those matchups. Uh, you've got a very accomplished pitcher on the mound, a very accomplished hitter at the plate. Both these guys are very analytical in the way they approach their at bats or their pitches, trying to outthink each other. Yeah. Carlo 
Carlos Torres doesn't buy it, and it's even two and two. Now the process starts over again. All right, now what do we do on two and two? You can almost hear him thinking out there. Change up. He bounces it to first. Goldie has it. Granky covers. Seven in a row retired by Zach. One down in the fifth. That's exactly what Zach Greinke's looking for when he throws the changeup. There are guys that try to throw it as a swing and a miss pitch. Take 10 or 12 miles an hour off of that changeup. Zach Greinke throws his it's just four or five miles an hour slower than his fastball. He wants the ball to be put in play weekly, and he got the easy ground ball to Goldie right there. Now we were chatting before the ball game with Oral Hershiser, who's working Dodgers television, just to our left here. And Oral was marveling about the Grinky changeup that he's seen for the last three years. What a weapon it is. Strike one to Corey Seeger. Seeger has single walk score to run. Fastballs in there, 0 and 2. Be careful with Corey Seager. Very dangerous at just 22 years old. Since May 11th, he's hit 12 home runs. That's the most of the major leagues over that span. It's number 70 misses, and it's two balls and two strikes. Seventy pitches, forty-five strikes. This is blasted deep right center and way out of here. Another home run for Corey Seager. That's eight in his last sixteen games. His fifteenth of the year ties it at two. Slider right in the middle of the plate, inside part of the plate, rather. He just didn't get it down there under the hands like he wanted. And no doubt about that one. Over the pool out there in right center field. Justin Turner, two for two. And an RBI double in the first and singled his last time up in the third. Both on first pitch fastball, so Zach Greinke starts him with the slider and gets the feeble swing this time from Justin Turner on the first pitch. How do you remember that stuff when you're out there, either as the pitcher or the catcher? It's just part of the game. You know, you, you remember uh, what guys hit hard and what guys hit softly. What did they take? What did they swing at? Not hard to remember with Turner. He only saw two pitches, both <laughs> fastballs. True. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, it seems like Turner is always in the middle of things for the Dodgers against the Diamondbacks, and that definitely is a case here at Chase Field. In 21 games in this ballpark, he's a 351 hitter with six doubles. This one's got a chance to go. O'Brien's at the wall, and he makes a leaping catch. Peter O'Brien. He may have taken a home run away from Justin Turner. The converted catcher snags that one, and it's out number two. Unfortunately, it was hit high enough in the air to give Peter a chance to get back there. That's our Chaz Roberts air conditioning and plumbing cool play of the game. Well above that yellow stripe as he makes the play out there nicely done Peter O'Brien. You know Archie Bradley had talked about Peter O'Brien and he said look when he was in the outfield in spring training let's be frank he wasn't very good. But Archie to his credit said now the O'Brien that he's seen at Reno and here is a much much better defensive outfielder. 
Gonzalez chops the first one out to Peralta in center field. And Granke is out of the fifth. But Corey Seager gets his 15th, and we're tied at two. You ain't one. Chaz Roberts A Year Conditioning Giveaway has returned. Nominate a family or nonprofit organization that's in need of a new AC unit by logging on to chazroberts.com slash cool play. Entries are due June 13th. It's the Chaz Roberts Air Conditioning Giveaway. I hear 120 yeah, coming up this weekend. This weekend. Tomas leads off the fifth. Asmani grounded out to third his first time up. This is June, right? That's what they tell me. <laughs> it's supposed to ease in the summer. Well, they seem to be easing into summer out to in the Ramtrucks.com pool area. Where they've got a party going on out there. Good night to be at the ballpark with all the roof and panels open. Tomas lifts this one high in the air. Left field, Van Slyke has got a chance, and he's got it with his back to the wall. That was almost the same ball that Peter O'Brien just caught. Very similar high fly ball chasing Van Slyke right back to the barrier, but able to make the catch right up against it without a jump. Back Ranky. Dodger fans are booing. D back fans cheering. Diamondbacks pitchers are now seven for their last 15. With a double and a homer. And Zach Ranky's 0 for 3 during that time. Yeah, Robbie Ray's been killing the ball. <laughs> Patrick Corbin. Every little bit helps. Yeah, Patrick Corbin is first in all of baseball. Uh, hits by a pitcher with 11. Zach Greinke is tied for fourth with his seven, and Robbie Ray is in seventh place with six hits. Well, somebody needs to start hitting against Mike Bolsinger. The Lamb homer in the third, the only hit he's given up since the first inning. He retired six in a row at one point. Lamb homer, and since then he's retired five straight. For the appeal, Brian Knight says no. Three and one. Oh, 
Zach started to take his base, but Carlos Torres has come on back. It's a full count. Well, we've seen Torres call a lot of pitches at the bottom of the zone. This one up near the top at 89 miles an hour. It looked like it was just at the edge of the zone there. Belts it into center. Well, there you go. The trend continues. A one out single for Granke. Now eight for their last 16. Looks like Zach was a little angry that pitch was called a strike. A little bat flip there as he lines that one into center field. Well, this is a big at bat of the inning right here for Nick Ahmed. You got a chance to really get something started here with only one out. And the top of the order coming up behind him. Nick struck out his first time up. Bounces that one. Granky stays put. One and zero. Two balls and no strikes. Singer suddenly hitting some speed bumps behind on the nine hole hitter three and oh. Talk about Bolsinger and that curveball. He'll throw it when he needs a strike, but this might be the only predictable fastball count in the game for Mike Bolson. Three and oh to the number nine hitter. You get him the green light here? Nick? Yeah. Ooh. It was right down Main Street. 70 pitches now for Mike Bolsinger. 42 strikes. Now all bets are off once again. 3 1 count, normally a fastball count, but saw Mike Bolsinger throw a curveball in the 2 0 delivery. Chase Utley snags it. They get the force on Greinke, and that's it. A tremendous play by the veteran second baseman. Kept that one from rolling into right field. Yeah, I thought that was a base hit into right. I was anxious to watch Zach Greinke and see if he tried to turn the corner and go to third, but Utley comes up with the play, gets it over to Seeger. That's all they can get is the force of second. So on it at first, two down now for Gene Segura, who's 0 for 2. Fly down, ground it out. Rick Cunningham wants a word with Mike Bolsinger. Back with you tomorrow, game two of the three game set, Diamondback Live pregame show at 6 o'clock on Fox Sports Arizona. Archie Bradley and Kenta Maeda. Wednesday is a getaway day game, an afternoon start. Corbin versus Kershaw, matchup of lefties. Carlos Torres out to break this up. Time is up. Justin Turner right on the line at third base. Jock Peterson very deep in center field. No doubles defense for the Dodgers right here. An extra base hit could possibly score Nick all the way from first base. So with that in mind, Turner guarding the line. Peterson playing extremely deep in center. Well, 
time for Gene Segura to find a gap. Gene, Gene, the hitting machine so far 0 for 2, but he's hit safely in four straight. There goes Ahmed. The ball gets away from Grandal. Nick didn't see it ahead first slide. And he's in there at second. His third stolen base of the year. That's another Dave McKay stolen base. Look, Nick is off and running before Bolsinger even lifted his front leg to deliver that ball to home plate. Utley with a little bit of a deke out there at second base. He was pointing out into center field like the ball had gotten by him, but Nick was on his belly sliding into second base and didn't see where the ball was. Duo count on Segura. Bullpen will get busy for Los Angeles. The right hander Pedro Baez is up and thrown. Rondal and Bolsinger have to get together. You know, should we get to Jake Lamb's spot? I don't think there's any way that Dave Roberts would allow Bolsinger to face him again after that opposite field home run back in the third and also the line out the right field in his first at bat of the game. He's got the lefty J.P. Owl up as well. Dave Roberts the first year skipper and there's the pitching coach Rick Honeycutt on the left. Two balls no strikes to Gene Segura two outs at Ahmed at second. Just inside three and oh. Another green light here. Well, for me, absolutely, Bolsinger is going to be out of this game quickly. That tends to groove a fastball here, like he did to Nick Ahmed. Turn it loose. Runner in scoring position out there. Dodger bullpen has been performing very well as of late, so you want to get to Bolsinger while you have a chance. Another high strike called by Carlos Torres, and it's three and one. by Nick Ahmed proves big right here as Gene Segura gets a little slider out over the plate and lines it right back up the middle of the field. Nick got a tremendous jump out there at second and scores without a play. And that will be it for Mike Bolsinger. Here's Dave Roberts. And he leaves trailing 3-2 back from Chase Field after this.
RBI single has made it 3 2 Diamondbacks here in the fifth inning. And the new pitcher for the Dodgers in his fourth season with LA, the veteran left hander J.P. Howell, on to face Jake Lamb. Our Jimmy John's delivery of the game. This is Jake Lamb off Mike Bolsinger in the third inning. He goes the other way for his 12th of the year. Now in there against the lefty Howell. Segura at first and two outs. Dodgers bullpen has gotten better by the month in April. Their ERA was just under four in May. It dropped down to 298, and so far this month, 182. Now Oral Hershiser was telling us before the game how well this unit has performed. Kenley Jansen had a blown save the other night, but other than that, they've been very good. There's Oral. The Bulldog. Working Dodger Television. 0 1 on Lamb. Segura is 7 for 11 in his stolen base attempts this year. Segura takes off. Lamb swings through, and he is out of there. As Monte Grandal throws out Gene Segura trying to steal. But the Diamondbacks get the big hit. A two out single makes it 3 2 Arizona. Phoenix at Cranky now with a 3 2 lead as we start the sixth inning. Time for a look at our quick and loans, rocket arms. Dodgers and Diamondbacks, leaders in strikeouts. No surprises here, former teammates. Zach Cranky so far tonight, five strikeouts. He has walked two, given up two runs on five hits. He's really only made a couple of mistakes in this game that have hurt him. For the most part, he's been throwing that perfect pitch. Trace Thompson, whose uh, brother Clay is playing tonight for the NBA championship in Golden State, leads off the inning. He drives that deep to center, but Peralta's there. One pitch, one out for Grinky. Clay Thompson tonight. Golden State Warriors, a three point specialist, had 26 points in the first half. 
That's the third most in the first half of an NBA Finals game in the last 20 years. <coughs> but uh, Golden State down nine against LeBron and the Cavaliers as they start the fourth quarter. Jock Peterson, 0 for 2. Now Clay Thompson was at one of the Dodger Giants games uh, over the weekend and had his Dodger hat on and they showed him on the big board at AT&T Park and everybody booed him. <laughs> <laughs> well, Draymond Green of the Warriors was suspended for the game tonight, and he's supposed to be hanging out with the Oakland A's, I believe. And I guess uh, they wanted to see if Cleveland could maybe win another game and they could get another night of NBA Finals, so they figured, well, how can we... Uh, you know that foul on Draymond Green? That was pretty bad. We should yeah. look at that. So he's sitting out tonight. Bob Melvin will figure out a way to use him in the game. <laughs> he will. Oakland up 5 0 over the Texas Rangers in the fourth inning. 80 pitches now for Zach Greinke, 52 strikes. Chops at that one, a high pop up near the LA dugout. About five rows back, it stays one and two. Jock Peterson, his swing and his approach have been almost constantly under construction. And he's hitless tonight since May 10th, more than a month now. He's hit under 190. Squares one up, hits a line drive right at Tomas in right field, who just froze in his tracks, and that ball shot over his head all the way to the wall. Peterson chugs into second base with a double. His 15th double this year, a one out base runner now for Yasmani Grandal. Grandal, the catcher, 0 for 2. Took a foul ball off his left wrist in a game in Toronto. That was back in early May, about a month ago. Wound up with a bone bruise and the injury kind of nagged throughout last month and into this month. And ever since that foul ball, he's hit less than a buck forty. It's that one into the shift. Ahmed throws it out. Peterson at third, two down. Hey, fans, plan ahead for some upcoming afternoon ball games at Chase Field and get a matinee price ticket. The next 12:40 game is this Wednesday against these Dodgers, followed by the Phillies on June 29th. Get your matinee ticket now at dbacks.com/matinee. Yeah, matinee game—a chance to come out here and see Clayton Kershaw Wednesday, 12:40 first pitch. So take advantage of that offer. Enjoy the air conditioned comfort of Chase Field. Watch Patrick Corbin take on the Dodgers ace. Here's Scott Van Slyke with two outs and Peterson at third. Trying to strand that runner. Frankie should already be out of this inning. One and 
one on Scott Van Slyke. Another injured Dodger. They have had guys on the DL on and off all year. Missed about 50 games with the lower back problem. Just came back June the 3rd. You know, all told, 16 different Dodgers have spent time on the disabled list already this season. A lot of them starting pitchers, of course. McCarthy still out with Tommy John. They lost Brett Anderson for much of the year. That was just spring training. Still without Ethier, still without Pui. One and two on Scott Van Slyke. Segura, the second baseman on the shortstop side of the bag. Peralta shaded over toward the pool in right center. Two and two. This Bob, these situations where a pitcher for you makes his money. He's got the tying run 90 feet away, should be out of the inning. He's got a dangerous guy up there in Van Slyke who laced a double off the wall and right his first time up tonight. This is this is that one point of the game it would seem where the guy who's the real A strands that run down to third. That's certainly what the Diamondbacks are hoping for right here. That's why you bring in an ace. That's why you bring in a guy that has been in these situations before and come out the other end on top. Trying to throw another perfect pitch. Two and two. Try to finish him with a slider here. Can't get him to fish. Full count. Pitcher spot is up next. Howie Kendrick is in the on deck circle. Diamondbacks had all kinds of problems with Kendrick last year. Right back with the same pitch again. It in the air behind second base. Segura is up there and he makes a running grab. Gene Segura gets Zach Granke out of the inning and they strand Peterson at third. All smiles coming off the mound after that one. What a play by Segura. Go get it. And then Zach Granke, the reaction coming off the mound. He still leads it 3 2.
of the sixth inning. Time to take a look back in baseball history. Brought to you by Geico. Omar Oliveris of the Angels tied a major league record by hitting four Diamondbacks in the same game. It actually happened twice in a three week span for the Angels. Steve Sparks, our old knuckleball buddy, hit four players. Uh, and then a couple weeks later, Omar Oliveris hit four Diamondbacks. Take Lamb, who was up when Gene Segura was caught stealing to win the bottom of the fifth. Will lead off the sixth against J.P. Howell. Here's a bouncer to first. Gonzalez has it. One away. How about that play by Gene Segura? I mean, he knew he was the only one that could possibly make a play on that little floater, so he just sprinted as hard as he could, as far out into center field as he could, and catches it right up in the webbing of the glove. We're going to get a double switch from Dave Roberts. Howie Kendrick will check into the ball game. Looks like he's going to replace Scott Van Slyke in left field. And they'll bring in a right hander to face Paul Goldschmidt. We'll sort it out when we come back. Back from Chase Field after this. Backs lead the Dodgers 3-2, and the new pitcher for LA, very hard throwing right-hander Pedro Baez, his 29th appearance. He has worked scoreless relief in 10 of his last 11 games. He will hit in the eighth spot now. Howie Kendrick places Scott Van Slyke in left field. Kendrick will bat ninth. Goldie has homered and flied out one for two. This was Paul Goldschmidt. After the Dodgers took a 1-0 lead in the top of the first, Goldie answered in the home half. His 12th of the year. Then Jake Lamb hit his 12th in the third. So Goldie's now hit safely in eight straight games. Blast this one. Deep right field corner. His second tonight is 13th of the year, and it's 4 2 D backs. Well, the Dodgers are taking a close look at this one in their video room. Let's see if it stayed fair. Here's the swing. Dave Roberts, I think, is going to challenge this one. Night, the first base umpire made the call. And you knew it had home run distance. It was just a question of fair or foul. This is not a Dodger challenge, we are told. This is an umpire crew chief review. There is the crew chief, Jerry Davis, in from third. And they'll take a look in New York. The ball was a home run. 
as you mentioned Baez with a big fastball 96 miles an hour Goldie caught it on the barrel a little bit late but right down that right field line. Let's see. Yeah I think that's foul. See Trace Thompson calling a foul right away, and Goldie kind of had a sheepish look on his face as he came down the on deck circle and high five Jake Lamb. I think he still got that same look on his face. I think he knows <laughs> he's going to have to go back I up and continue the at bat. He's trying to hide behind the railing. <laughs> Maybe they won't make me go back out there. He's going to get ready just in case. Here's a wider view. Yeah, there's the clearly to the right of the pole there. Unfortunately. Baez still taking a few warm-up tosses. This raises one question. You always want to get the calls right, but if you're going to suggest that they look at it, then why have challenges? Good point. It's taking so long. It was awfully close. Maybe there's an angle that shows it hit the pole. Just kind of grazed it as it went by. Well, Jake Lamb waiting to find out because he'll have to hit a home run to keep up with Goldie if that's a fair ball. And here we go. Gary Davis signals foul ball, so Goldie will return against Pedro Baez. The batting ball was foul. Managers may request reviews of home runs, but they cannot use a challenge on them. So it's a dramatic strike for Goldie in a 1 1 count. Even as Goldie rounded first base, he looked back over his shoulder to Brian Knight to see what he called, and I think he was as surprised as anybody. Sends it over there again. One and two. Boy, Baez has had his number. Change up from Baez that time. He also throws a slider to go along with that high velocity fastball. He's a very busy man out of that LA bullpen. Second on the team in relief appearances. Opponents this year hitting less than 200 against him. Two and two. Another change up. Got him. 97 miles an hour fastball, so he goes from a home run to a strikeout, and that's two down. Hey, D backs fans, make sure you tune in tomorrow. Fox Sports David Arizona oh, Team oh, Tuesday oh. ticket offer will be available during the Diamondbacks Dodgers broadcast, but only during the TV broadcast. It's a special one night only ticket special. Coverage begins at 6. Diamondback Live pregame show. One night only, a special offer, good only during the broadcast. Operators are standing by. They really will be. Yeah. That's Archie Bradley and Kenta Maida. Two outs now. Here's David Peralta. He has singled and struck out. So a great opportunity to get some D backs tickets. 
on a great deal tomorrow night while you're watching the Diamondbacks. I like that sign from Grandal. He just sort of waved. Ah, yeah. Never mind. Let me check my chart again. All right. Texas cheat sheet. Check it again. Would you want to have one of those if you were catching? No. Seems like a lot. Unfortunately, you know, we're breeding that in high schools and colleges. Coaches call almost every pitch for their catchers and pitchers, and you know, I think it really helps if a guy has the the freedom and the liberty to call pitches for his pitcher. You learn how to get a pitcher and his stuff through an inning, through a ball game. And when you're constantly checking the cheat sheet and the coach or manager is telling you what to throw, you never learn a very valuable skill for a catcher. Game calling. I've heard a lot of scouts complain about that that you might have a very promising catching prospect who's had a brilliant collegiate career but he's never called a pitch. Has no idea how to call a game. Here are the scouts behind home plate tonight. Three times he's asked for that fastball in. 96. So it's a 1 2 3 inning for the Dodgers. We head to the seven. D backs have a 3 2 lead. game nights by signing up at one of the interactive kiosks right here at Chase Field during any Diamondbacks regular season home game. Leading off for Los Angeles. D-backs lead at 3-2 as we start the seventh here. inning. Zach Greinke back out there. Now we have some defensive changes for the Diamondbacks behind him as he continues his warm-up tosses. Michael Bourne has checked into the game. He'll take over in center field. That's where David Peralta had been. As Monte Tomas moves from right to left, replacing Peter O'Brien. And Peralta, who had been in center, will take over in right. So O'Brien out and Bourne in. Howie Kendrick, who was double switched into the ball game, is first at bat tonight. Zach Greinke starts the seventh at 92 pitches. And there's ball one. Kendrick 219, two homers. It's been a slow year for him. He's stuck in a four for 33 right now. Oh, 
But he was a pain in the neck last year. Boy, was he ever. Drove in 12 runs in 15 games against the Diamondbacks after coming over from the Angels his first season as a Dodger last year. Rinky ahead, one and two. If you're wondering about Zach Rinky's pitch count, he threw 104 in his shutout last week of the Tampa Bay Rays. His high for the year is 107. That was four starts ago and a win at St. Louis, May 22nd. So that's seven times this year that Granke's been over 100 pitches. Don't forget there's an off day coming up Thursday as we travel to Philadelphia after the ball game Wednesday. So he'll get one extra day of rest in his next mm -hmm. start, as will everyone in the rotation. And that will occasionally make a difference in how far you extend the starting pitcher, knowing that he's going to get an extra day of rest before his next start. Now, do you consider doing that here not only because of the day of rest, Bob, but because it's the Dodgers and this is a big game? Oh, I, definitely. <laughs> I mean, who else would you want on the mound? Yeah, I'm yeah. not taking anything away from the guys in the bullpen, but sometimes that's the question you have to ask yourself. Is there anybody down there in that bullpen I like better than the guy I have on the mound? Well, the bullpen will get busy down there for the Diamondbacks. They have a lead. It's the seventh inning, and so there's Tyler Clifford in the Sanderson Ford bullpen. Chip Hale has been very regimented. Tyler Clifford works the seventh, Daniel Hudson the eighth, and Brad Ziegler the ninth with a lead. And he will stick to the script. Clifford warming up. Two and two on Kendrick. Even when this guy's slumping, he's a pain in the neck. Yeah, he's really having trouble catching up to good fastballs right now from Zach Greinke. Everything fouled off to the right side. I mean, he's naturally an opposite field hitter, but he's not catching up to those heaters. Pitch number 100 on the way. Full count three and two. 100 pitches, 65 for strikes. To get him through this inning, maybe. Now you have to have second thoughts. He's hit for Kendrick. He wins the battle. Rolls it into right, a leadoff single. Defensive changes this inning. He's an opposite field hitter and guides that one through the right side after a lengthy battle with Zach Greinke, a leadoff base hit for Kent. Jay Sudley, the leadoff man now. We mentioned that Yasiel Puig, who's been battling a left hamstring injury, has started a minor league rehab assignment tonight at Rancho Cucamonga. And Puig has uh, hit a home run off Lancaster Jethawks pitcher Dean Dietz. Double D? Yeah, double D. It took him yard. Kendrick over there five for five in stolen base attempts this year. 
Yeah, normally you might not run. You want to give Chase Utley that hole in the right side of the infield, but with the pull shift on, it's not as much of a factor. And guys will be more likely to try to run with this pull shift on for a left handed pull hitter. Jake Lamb, the third baseman, right behind the second base bag. The 1 0 to Utley. Kendrick holds. That one's fouled off, and it's 1 and 1. Very dangerous left hand hitter is on deck, Corey Seeger. He's had a big night, a single, a walk, and a home run. We do have one lefty back there, the rookie Zach Curtis, but it's Tyler Clifford warming up. Yeah, Seeger's splits are pretty even against left and right. Power numbers, strikeouts, walks, everything pretty even. Pro rate. A lot more at bats against right handed pitching. He had another uh, lefty back there, Edwin Escobar, but he was sent down to the minor leagues Friday when Peter O'Brien was called up. In fact, Escobar starting tonight for the Reno Aces in AAA. But it again goes back to that idea that Chip uh, holds very firmly to. Lippert is the seventh inning guy, so he's warming up. 105 pitches now for Grinky. One and two on Chase Utley. Utley had three hits last night in their loss in San Francisco, but 0 for 3 so far today. Stays alive. To see some of the uh, nonverbal signs from Zach Greinke taking a little longer between pitches. Those are the things you have to learn as a manager and a pitching coach because guys are always going to say, I'm fine, I'm fine, I can get this guy. But you have to read between the lines sometimes, look at their body language, how much time are they taking between pitches, are they calling the catcher out to talk. 107, he's already tied his season high. He misses there and it's full on Utley three and two. Randy Johnson would always start asking for a new baseball. Sometimes that three or four in a row. Yeah, I don't like this one. Give me another one. Just give me another one. Just to slow things down yeah, and give him a chance to breathe. Kind of a sign that, yeah, he might be getting near the end. Kendrick takes off. He got a good jump. Utley shoots it out the other way to Yasmani Tomas. The first out in the seventh. Here comes Corey Seeger. Shortstop Corey Seeger. Seeger hit one 435 feet his last time up in the fifth inning. The longest home run of his career in his 15th this year. Here comes Chip Hale. Lippert is ready in the bullpen. Frankie get the right of first refusal in these situations. Well, I would assume so. But Chip has to hear the right answers. How are you going to go after this guy? I mean he's already hit a home run and a single and you walked him once. What are you going to do to him this time? And if you don't like the answer then you're almost compelled to go to the bullpen. But apparently he heard what he wanted to hear from his ace and he's going to leave Zach in there to face Corey Seager. Seager single and scored in the first walked in the third. Crushed a home run in the fifth. He has homered counting tonight eight times in his last 16 games. Kendrick at first, one out. Ball one. 
Corey Seager, the guy at the plate, and Justin Turner in the on deck circle combined are four for five in this game with a homer and a double and driven in both runs. The rest of the Dodger lineup, three for 21 with five strikeouts. Turner drove in the game's first run after Seager singled in the first and hit a double to deep center field, made it 1 0 LA. Are you going batter to batter here? Because if he gets Seeger, don't you have to sort of get the same answers to the same questions as Turner comes up? He can't go back out can't there. Go back out there. That's yeah. the thing. One and one. Tyler Clippard still throwing down there. And there for a strike two and two. Hard to throw a better pitch than that. Agreed on a fastball there. They just disagreed on the location. Now Zach changes his mind, decides he wants to throw a changeup. Kendrick holds it first. Seeger lifts it in the air along the left field line for Yasmani Torres. <laughs> Kendrick will stay put it first. Two outs. Justin Turner now. Turner two for three in the ball game against Zach Greinke, one for six lifetime against Tyler Clippard. Chappelle going to stick with his starter at 114 pitches, already well into a season high. Turner an RBI double in the first, a single in the third. He flied out his last time up, two for three. Howie Kendrick, the tying run at first, two outs. Another first pitch slider. You may recall the first two hits in the game for Turner came on first pitch fastballs. His last at bat in the fifth inning when he ended up flying out to the left field. Zach started him with the slider just like he did in this at bat. Jumped ahead. 115 pitches, 75 strengths. Clippard still warming up in the D back bullpen. The 0 1 to Justin Turner. Just inside, one and one. Almost got him right there. You see that exaggerated leg kick Ooh. diving in toward home plate. Just did get that left elbow out of the way. Kendrick holds it first. Fastball's in there, and it's one and two. Kendrick had the leadoff single after a 10-pitch at bat. Utley flied out. Seeger flied out. Now he's ahead of Turner, one and two. Crowd on its feet here at Chase, trying to get Zach Greinke out of this seventh inning with that 3-2 lead. Two and two. Baxter's on top of the Diamondback dugout trying to get everybody fired up. Need one more strike here.
Got him. Castillo will finish it off, and Zach Greinke strands that leadoff single. We stretch at Chase Field, where the D-backs lead the Dodgers 3-2. He got out of that seventh inning, went deep into the ball game, and we'll head to the home half now. It's still 3-2 D-backs. What's next brought to you by CenturyLink. Game two tomorrow night. Kenta Maeda, the Japanese import on the mound for L.A. against Archie Bradley. Diamondback Live pregame show at 6 o'clock on Fox Sports Arizona. D-backs.com slash tickets. Come on down. Boy, Greinke dug deep into the reserves there, B.B., but he got the big three outs he needed. Made the biggest pitches of the ball game when he needed them the most. Wellington Castillo will lead off the home half now against Pedro Baez. Castillo was twice struck out looking on borderline strike calls at best, and there's strike one. Castillo born Tomas, five, six, and seven in the Diamondback seven. Mention that uh, Chip Hale likes to go to that script. Tyler Clippard seven, Daniel Hudson eight, Brad Ziegler nine when the team is ahead. And he's sticking with that script. Even though he stuck with Zach Greinke in that inning, Tyler Clippard had been warming up the entire seventh, and now Daniel Hudson will start warming up to get ready for the eighth. 0 oh 2 on Beef Wellington. Anderson Ford bullpen there Huddy. This looks like it'll be Pedro Baez's inning. Dodger bullpen quiet right now. He struck out Goldie and Peralta to win the sixth, and now he's back out there to start the seventh. He strikes out Castillo. Hey fans, when the D-backs win, you win at Papa John's. A day after every Diamondbacks win, you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's. Enter promo code D-backs50 at PapaJohns.com. Pedro Baez has struck out every Diamondbacks hitter he's faced tonight. 
Three up, three down, and now for the first time tonight, it's Michael Bourne who took over in center field. Michael batting 250 with one home run. Turner creeps in from third. Bourne shows bunt but fouls it off. 0 1. Bourne has hit safely in three of his last four games, including that big home run against Jose Fernandez Saturday. Broke up a perfect game with two outs in the sixth inning. Missed at 96, a ball and a strike. Didn't get the fastball that time. One and two. We're talking about Zach Greinke getting out of that last inning uh, really sets a tone for this series. You'd like to think that Archie Bradley was paying close attention tonight. That how Zach Greinke went about getting these Dodgers hitters out. Certain situations, uh, hitters can be more aggressive. Other situations, they might be more patient. Hopefully Archie and the rest of the pitching staff learned a lot from watching Zach Greinke tonight. And you could see Archie in fact involved in the conversation that Zach was having with pitching coach Mike Butcher at the end of that last half inning. And there he is right there right on his shoulder. Two and two. Told the story many times before, but Dusty Baker, in his days as a hitting coach with the Giants, used to always say that he hoped the first game of the series was against a pitcher that had good control. Because he's just coming out of the advance meeting, he's going to go at your weaknesses as a hitter, and it should tell you right away how the opposing team is going to pitch you in that series. Every pitcher is a little bit different. They're not all machines. They don't all throw the same pitches from the same deliveries, but uh, it would give you a good idea as a hitter how they're probably going to attack you the rest of the series if that first pitcher in the series has real good command of four pitches. Michael Bourne, another good at bat. He's worked the count full three and two. Pass ball down and away, and he missed badly a one out walk. So where Grandal set up, but Baez missed the target big time. And there's a base runner at first with one out for Yasmani Tomas, who's 0 for 2. Thoughts about uh, starting a runner here. Well, Three, two games, about seventh that. inning. Yeah, I, I like start runners, guys that can steal. Even though Grandal threw out Gene Segura, he hasn't had a great year. Just at 25 percent on the season. And it really depends on Baez and what Dave McKay has on the Dodger reliever. Well, remember, it was a stolen base by Nick Ahmed in the fifth inning. That put him at second for Segura, who delivered an RBI single, and that so far is the difference in the ballgame. An extra 90 feet. Horn holds. That pitch is in there at 96. 0 and 1. Asmani seemed a little disappointed with that strike call. Nice time for Yasmani to drive one through that right side of the infield. So many of his base hits in the early part of the season came to the opposite field. He's got a big hole on that right side to work with now. Gonzalez holding Bourne on the bag at first. Check swing foul, and it's 0 2.
pitcher spot is due up next. That's Zach Greinke, but Ricky Weeks Jr. is in the on deck circle. I think if Greinke's night had come to an end after he threw a season high pitch count. Misses up a 97, one and two. Cranky finished with 119 pitches tonight, 77 for strikes. His previous high for the year had been 107. Horn holds again. Tomas gets it in the air. Deep center field. Peterson is back. And he makes a tremendous running catch. Bourne will have to hustle. He'll get back to first. What a play by Jock Peterson in center field. Peterson flexing that right wrist as he crashed into the wall in center field again. Took one last look and determined he could make the play up against the barrier. That's a nice running catch over the shoulder by Jock Peterson. Fortunately, his throw back to the infield got away. And Michael Bourne was able to retreat to first base. He's still cranking that right wrist around a little bit. Raced himself against that wall, and he was running full speed when he hit the wall. And Bourne was busting it, too. You can see Michael trying to catch his breath down there at first. He was halfway to third base. When Peterson caught that ball, he really had to hustle to get back to first. There's Peterson feeling that hand. It's already taped up as it is. The glove is off. Ricky Weeks Jr. will bat for Granke. 236 and three home runs. This will be an interesting matchup. Ricky Weeks at 33 still has that bat speed by as a power pitcher. That one kicks away from Grandal and Bourne will get a free 90 feet. He's thinking about third here, but he'll stop at second. So there's an insurance run out there with two down for Ricky. Wristband of the right arm. He was looking down at his forearm as well. <laughs> You've got Peterson out there looking at his left wrist and Grandall looking at his right wrist, cranking it around there. Bullpen is still quiet for Los Angeles. Diamondbacks have been out hit 7 5, but they lead it 3 2. And Williams coaching at third. Michael Bourne, the runner at second, two outs. Seven strike one. Now, Trace Thompson in right field with the best outfield arm for the Dodgers. Jock Peterson not real strong, and Howie Kendrick in left field as the second baseman playing left field. I got to believe Matt Williams is going to be windmilling Michael Bourne wherever the ball is hit. Peterson still pretty deep in center. Ricky Weeks as a pinch hitter this year, batting 250. That includes four doubles and four RBIs. Trying to get Daniel Hudson an insurance run home from second with two outs. Hudson ready in the D back bullpen. Now 
Fastball misses two balls and one strike. Ricky Weeks Jr. has been a very nice addition. Good veteran right hand bat off the bench, the occasional spot outfield start. Didn't get the fastball that time. Two and two. Yeah, change up at 87. We talked about Ricky Weeks. 28 at bats off the bench as a pinch hitter, and a lot of them have come against high velocity relief pitchers like Baez. You watch him take batting practice, Ricky Weeks. He can hit taters, as George Scott used to say, with the best of them. Center Peterson again and again he's there. Pedro Baez strands Bourne at second will go to the eighth inning. It's still 3 2 D backs. Ten pitch at bat. Hendrick won the battle, a leadoff single. He was the tying run. But then Chip Hale, after a fly ball by Utley, went out there. He left Zach Granke in. He got the job done. Yeah, it took uh, it took a lot of guts, both by Zach Granke and the manager Chip Hale. I mean, Seeger had a home run, a single, and a walk against Zach Granke. Turner had a double and a single against the right-hander, but went with his ace, and he was rewarded as he got out of that inning. Through 119 pitches through seven, and now your Arizona Federal Credit Union pitching change as we start the eighth inning. It's Daniel Hudson, 25 appearances, a 182 ERA. Huddy worked for the first time in a week Saturday against Miami. He had a long eighth inning. He threw 30 pitchers after uh, pitches after allowing a leadoff homer to Marcelo Zuna. And Hudson has given up a home run in each of his last two outings. And they'll face some home run hitters, Adrian Gonzalez, Trace Thompson, and Jock Peterson, four, five, and six in the LA eighth. Gonzalez 0 for three. Diamondbacks have the shift on. Jake Lamb, the third baseman in the second base spot. And there's ball one from Huddy. Gonzalez doesn't often crank it up like that with that bad back that's nagged him all season long. He, he's admitted sometimes it's hard to swing. It hurts. It's a lower back problem that he had last year. It resurfaced in spring training. He's got a pinched nerve back there. He's had an epidural shot. 
One and two. And he, he is not uh, swinging the bat like we normally see, Bob. No, and he's chasing a lot of pitches that he normally would not offer at. That could have something to do with the back as well. You know, if you know it's going to hurt, you want to start that swing and finish the swing, even if the pitch strays out of the zone. Chops it to the left side. Ahmed drifts out there in shallow left. One out for Huddy. It's been a long time since Adrian Gonzalez ranked sixth on the team in extra base hits. Yeah, he's had a real power drain. Right fielder, Trace Thompson. There's Trace Thompson, whose brother Clay had a big night for the Golden State Warriors tonight, but they were beaten by LeBron and the Cavaliers. So the NBA Finals will continue. They should have that thing wrapped up by about Labor Day. <laughs> Just in time for preseason yeah, to start. They're, they're in no hurry. Thompson walked, struck out, fly out, 0 for 2. Now this is a guy, despite his hitless night so far tonight, whose bat has really come alive for LA. Ten home runs on the season. Nine of those have come since the first week of May. He's done a nice job. That's in there for a strike at 95. One and one. Mentioned earlier in our broadcast that the Dodgers today formally release Carl Crawford. So they will eat about $35 million on that. It's going to create more opportunities for Trace Thompson. Crawford had been designated for assignment a while ago. No team was foolhardy enough to claim him and be forced to pick up that money. But now, as you said, he can get Carl Crawford for the minimum. Prorated, uh, you know, oh, two and a half months into the season yeah. now. Yeah. Game 66 here tonight. Two balls and one strike to Trace Thompson. Trace Thompson played about 40 games or so with the White Sox last year. His first look at the big leagues. Acquired by the Dodgers in December, part of a three team deal with the White Sox and the Reds. Didn't get to play much when he first became a Dodger Trace Thompson. Started nine of their first 25 games and admitted he was a little frustrated. As he sort of went through the same thing in Chicago, just trying to get some at bats, some looks. But his versatility defensively and his production at the plate have really made him a key part of this year's Dodger ball club. He is the runt of the litter in the family, Trace Thompson. His dad, Michael, was an NBA champion. Michael and Clay are also his older brothers. They were basketball stars as kids. Trace played on the team with him in high school, but he quit because he couldn't get many shots. Clay was taking them all. Pass me the ball. So he focused on baseball, and that worked out. He wound up as a second round draft pick by the White Sox. An athletic family, to say the least. Very much so. And for Trace Thompson, a kind of a slow start to his minor league career. He's never really hit for high averages, but his third season in the minor leagues, the power bat started to come around. 24 homers, 25 the next season. Giving Hudson a good battle here. Already yanked that one a bit, and the count is full three and two.
He walked him. Lost the handle on a fastball. A one out walk to Thompson. And you can see Huddy very upset with himself. Tying run aboard for L.A. Jock Peterson steps in. He doubled his last time up. Hit a rocket right at Yasmani Tomas, who was in right field at the time, and it sailed over Yasmani's head. And now they'll move the shift from the left hand side to the right. You can see Jake Lamb out there in the second base spot. Control and command have started getting away from Daniel Hudson here. You mentioned that Daniel Hudson went a week without pitching. You just wonder if that might be too much. A you know, guy that's used to coming in and pitching two days in a row, then take a day off, then maybe pitch three days in a row and take a day off. Unfortunately, the Diamondbacks haven't had a lead a lot late in the ball games for Daniel Hudson to get the work he might need to stay sharp. It's actually happened to Huddy twice in the last three or four weeks. Ever since the third week of May, he's now twice gone a full week, seven days without pitching. And he's having trouble throwing strikes behind on Jock Peterson, 2 0. So much you can simulate down in the bullpen if you've gone two, three, four days without pitching and you feel like you need some work. It's just not the same when there's not a hitter in a different uniform standing in the batter's box. Oh, there's a strike. It goes back to that rolls that we talked about earlier with Tyler Clipper that Chip here really sticks to. And there's been a couple of periods when the Diamondbacks weren't going all that well and it just didn't. Require the use of Daniel Hudson, and before you know it, you look up, and he hasn't pitched in a week. Likes to save him for games, exactly like this one. 3 2 game in the eighth. Missing badly here now behind three balls and a strike. No one throwing the Diamondback bullpen. You saw Brad Ziegler still sitting out there. He went to three and two on Trace Thompson, lost him, a one out walk. Now he's behind on Peterson, three and one. And back to back one out walks for Daniel Hudson. Here comes Mike Butcher. He looks like he's overthrowing a bit. He just doesn't seem to have a real good release point. Uh, his fastball is his bread and butter pitch that mid to upper 90s fastball with some tailing action, and usually he can keep that in and around the bottom of the strike zone. Which sets up the straight change up that he'll throw from time to time, but he's just searching for a good release point on any of his deliveries right now. And the bullpen will get busy. Zach Curtis, the left hander, and Brad Ziegler, the right hander, warming up with the Sanderson Ford bullpen. They've got the switch hitting Yasmani Grandal up now. Pitcher spot after that, and Kike Hernandez in the, is, uh, in the on deck circle. So here's Grandal 0 for 3. Trace Thompson, the tying runs at second. Jock Peterson, go ahead, run at first, and one out. A 
Well, that's 19 pitches for Huddy and more balls than strikes. You've got Hernandez, a right hand hitter on deck. Ball two. Twenty pitches for Daniel Hudson, nine strikes. There's a strike two and one. Two old change up from Daniel Hudson. And all looked like he couldn't believe that pitch. <laughs> Misses. He walked Thompson, he walked Peterson, now three and one on Grandal. Kike Hernandez will be next. Pitcher spot due up. Howie Kendrick behind him. He has walked, the base is loaded. Three consecutive one out walks for Daniel Hudson. We almost have to go with Brad Ziegler now, I would think. Yeah, and Hudson really struggling to find the strike zone. Brad Ziegler, ground ball machine. And now Kike Hernandez has been announced as the pinch hitter. And here comes Chip Hale. Chip checking in with Carlos Torres, the plate umpire. So Hernandez entered into the record books. And they'll go get Daniel Hudson, who has walked the bases full with one down in a 3 2 ball game. Pitching change to Chase Field back after this. Consecutive one out walks issued by Daniel Hudson have the bases full of Dodgers and here a little earlier than we anticipated is the closer Brad Ziegler will try and uh, lock down a five out save. Brad 12 saves in 25 appearances this year the ERA of 3 1 2. He worked around a pair of leadoff singles and nailed down a save Saturday in the win over Miami. A bunch of numbers right there for you to read, but the one you need to know is since 2008, Brad Ziegler has induced 105 double plays, the most as a reliever. And Jim Johnson is second place on the list at 81. Well, this is the pitcher spot for the Dodgers. Bases full. 
One out and Kike Hernandez will be the pinch hitter. Trace Thompson is the tying run at third. Jock Peterson go ahead run at second. Yasmani Grandal the catcher at first. Hernandez hitting just 205 this year. There's a strike going along. KK Hernandez had a very nice year last year in LA, but the batting average this season is down over 100 points. He is three for his last 18 at the plate. Way out in front of that one, 0 and 2. Hernandez trying to ambush a fastball, and Brad Ziegler throws in that frisbee slider way out in front. OPS down 200 points from last year for Hernandez. The 0 and 2 from Brad Ziegler. Got him. A deep breath from Daniel Hudson. One more out to get. It'll be Kendrick. Well, that was just a straight overmatch right there. Fastball first pitch for a called strike, and then two sliders off the plate away. Not even close. They're loaded two outs for Kendrick who singled off Granke his last time up and a long battle with Zach a 10 pitch at bat leaves off that one Howie Kendrick has had the most looks at Brad Ziegler on this Dodger roster 14 previous at bats he's had four base hits. Gotten a lot better for Brad recently. He went through a spell there where he just couldn't get any movement on it. Had the rotation, but wasn't getting that lateral movement away from the right handed hitters that he's getting here tonight. Just a gorgeous pitch right there. Did he check? It's called by the plate umpire, yeah, I was. believe. Yeah. Carlos Torres says strike two. Changing it now. They're putting ball two up on the board. And I think the board's wrong. Yep. Yes, Carlos Torres is signaling a ball in two strikes. Now they have it right. One and two on Howie Kendrick. Three two ball game, eighth inning, bases full, two outs. He reaches down and drops it into center, and Michael Bourne is there! What a grab by Michael Bourne! And Daniel Hudson is off the hook! Michael Bourne came into the ballgame midway through to take over in center, and he may have just saved the game right there. It's still 3-2 D-backs.
kinds of topics on the table, certainly for Diamondbacks Live, the post-game show. But one topic in particular, I, I can't wait to get your take, and also Bob, Zach Reinke on the mound, and Chip Hill comes out to talk, and he's earned the right to say, I think I can finish what I started, right? Yeah, a lot of times you don't see the, the manager go out there without him taking that pitcher out. Zach Greinke pleaded a case, and he's earned the right to do so, and uh, showed him why, why he was able to leave him in, too. And, Steve, as we send it back to you, just to be clear, Bob Brenly never gave that right to Brandon because he was <laughs> very young in his major league career. That's we'll right. see you on DVX Live, the post game show. Thanks, guys. Oh, you're tough on Webby, huh? Well, he was a kid. Nick Ahmed squirts that the other way. Gonzalez bobbles it, but the new pitcher is there to cover. It's Lewis Coleman, the right-hander. And they retire Nick Ahmed. Lewis Coleman, his first season with L.A. after five years as a Kansas City Royal, he's done a very nice job. This is his 30th appearance at 2.84 ERA. Closing batters hitting only 157 against Coleman. Really good scoreless relief in 21 of his last 24 games. You know, Oral Hershiser was telling us before the game how big an addition Lewis Coleman has been for this LA bullpen. Gene Segura, an RBI single his last time up. A big two out single in the fifth that made it 3 2. Late time granted for Yasmani Grandal. We have seen some sensational Diamondback outfield defense here tonight. Peter O'Brien likely took a home run away early in the ball game with a leaping catch in front of the wall in left field, and then Michael Bourne for sure saved at least two runs there. Absolutely. And the lead with that diving catch in center. One to Segura. But Coleman, one of those guys, much like Jake Arietta, the Chicago Cubs, really throws across his body. We're seeing more and more pitchers do that for the deception. That create more torque too if you're throwing across like well, that. It was always thought that it would put a lot more pressure on your arm to throw across your body the way Coleman is doing here tonight, the way Arietta does. Uh, as I mentioned, we've seen a number of pitchers throwing across their body. It, uh, it used to be something that pitching coaches would try to break guys up. Mm. One and two on Gene. It is a very herky jerky delivery. And that stride, to, which is normally directly toward home plate, out toward the front of the mound. He's way over on that third base side. It really hides the ball until the last instant. Segura so able to lay off that one. And the count is full three and two. Dodgers in the top of the ninth will have the top of the order. Utley, Seeger, Turner. Brad Ziegler will try and go for the five out save. Off Coleman and into center of base hit. Gene, Gene, the hitting machine. He's two for four. Gene got knee buckled earlier in the bat with this same pitch. A slider starts right at him, breaks over the inside part of the plate. This time he takes it right back up the middle of the field. Here comes Dave Roberts, the left hand hitting Jake Lamb stepping in. That'll be it for Lewis Coleman. Diamondbacks lead it 3 2. Chance to add to that lead. Lefty on his way in back after this.
Michael Libertor comes out of the L.A. bullpen. How about that ERA? 0.92 is 28th appearance. Striking out a batter per inning. Opponents hitting under 200 against the Dodger lefty this year. D-backs have a 3-2 lead. One out here in the home half of the eighth inning. Gene Segura in first, and here's Jake Lamb. Jake Homer in the third, his 12th of the year. Our former Diamondback, Mike Bolsinger. Lamb faced a lefty specialist his last time up. Led off the sixth inning against J.P. Howell and grounded out to first. Good pickoff move by the Dodger left hander, unless he's setting up a good one. Those are two pretty feeble attempts over there. Gene Segura read it easily. Segura was thrown out trying to steal to end the fifth inning. Fifth time this year he's been caught. He's stolen seven. Inside for a ball, 1 0. Oh. If you're Jake Lamb, Bob, lefty lefty, we all know the deal there. What's your approach in this at bat? Usually, this is just my own opinion. Usually, if you bring in a lefty to face a left handed hitter, he's going to try to get you out breaking balls away. That's the general approach. And that fastball inside to start the sequence may have been to set up this next pitch a breaking ball away. We'll see. Somebody called time. Nope, long set. Oh, Fastball up and in. Yeah. Jake's had such a good opposite field approach at times this year. This would probably be one of those at bats where he would be well served to think about driving that ball to left center field. Another fastball in. Grandall had called for a slider away, and Libertor shook him off. Wanted a fastball inside. Fastball in again. Missed again. Three and zero. Oh. Go for that slider away here, maybe. Fastball away, yep. Left it out over the plate, but it's in there for strike one. Even when he tries to hit the outside corner with a fastball, it's straight all the way across the plate. Yeah. Segura holds it first. That's in there for a strike, and it's a full count three and two. Like he wants to throw another fastball in that outside corner. Grandall went through everything he had. He shook them all off to eventually get to the fastball away. The last time he threw that pitch, it was belt high in the middle. He'll try to throw it out there again. 3 2 pitch. Segura holds. Lamb fouls it off. The 
David Webb, Todd Wall standing by D backs live post game show right after our ball game on Fox Sports Arizona. A lot to talk about in this one. Yeah, he's finally going to throw the slider. Hang it. Missed with it. A single and a walk and put two on with one out for Goldie. And quickly Dave Roberts is out there. Yeah, technically may have nipped the edge of the strike zone there but that upper corner of the strike zone is not a good place to throw a breaking ball. You're rarely going to get that call. Well, Jake works the walk against the lefty specialists and they'll bring in the veteran Joe Blanton to pitch to Paul Goldschmidt when we come back. Lead the Dodgers 3 2. Try to tack on a couple more here. And they'll try to do that against the new pitcher for LA, the veteran Joe Blanton, who signed as a free agent in January. And he has been a very good pitcher out of their bullpen. He is third in the National League in opponent batting average and whip. He's kind of reinvented himself as a relief pitcher as a starter. He was a four pitch guy, fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. As a reliever, he really relies heavily on that slider, throws it almost half the time. Right hand hitter is hitting only 164 against Joe Blanton this year as Paul Goldschmidt steps in with Gene Segura at second Jake Lamb at first and one out Goldie Homer in the first is 12th of the year. Two balls and one strike. Goldie actually homered twice tonight. <laughs> His second one uh, went around, around the bases and they put the number up on the board and everything and then they called it back when they looked at it and it was just fouled by a smidge in the right field corner. So they took the home run and the run off the board. Two one pitch. There's a strike. Two and two. Borderline. At best. Maybe one of the red seams caught the edge of the black. Maybe.
Bounced up the middle. Seeger. Ugly. They turn two. We'll go to the ninth inning. Brad Ziegler will try and nail down a five out save. It's 3 2. Summary, Zach Granke threw 119 pitches to get through seven innings tonight. He got a couple of big outs in the seventh. The offense has been provided by solo homers Goldie and Lamb. Segura, the RBI single in the fifth, has been the difference so far. Brad Ziegler, who got the final two outs in the eighth inning after Daniel Hudson walked the bases loaded. He'll try and complete a five out save. He'll work to chase Utley, Corey Seeker, and Justin Turner in the top of the Dodger order. For his career in save opportunities of five outs or more, Brad Ziegler is eight of ten. He converted three of them last year. Chase Utley 0 for 4. Shift is on. There's ball one. Jake Lamb in the second base spot. Nick Ahmed all by himself midway between second and third on the left hand side. Giants are winning right now at home at AT&T Park. They lead the Brewers 5-4 in the seventh inning. Dodgers came into tonight five back of the Giants for the NL West lead. D-backs ten and a half back. Brad Ziegler came in top eight bases loaded one out struck out Kike Hernandez got Howie Kendrick to drop one into center on which Michael Bourne made a sensational catch. This is bounced to second for Segura one down. Corey Seager. Biggest out of the ball game right here. This is by far and away the best hitters the Dodgers have in the lineup right now. The most dangerous, the most consistent. You throw your best pitches to this guy. He has singled, walked, homered, scored twice. Two for three. Corey Seeger since May 11th has now hit 13 home runs, the most of the major leagues since May 11th. Brad behind 2 0. Oh. Justin Turner on deck. Turner has two hits tonight. Nick 
Young man right to him. Two down. Two ground ball outs for Brad Ziegler and Justin Turner. This has been a tremendous ball game tonight. We've seen home runs, we've seen clutch pitching, we've seen spectacular defense. And Brad Ziegler trying to get the final five outs and give the Diamondbacks their third straight win. Turner and RBI double in the first. He singled in the third. He's two for four. Strike one. Diamondback since the start of the 2014 season, just 11 and 30 versus the Dodgers. Working on reversing that trend, a little squib shot back to the mound. Ziegler has it, and that's the ball game. Brad Ziegler, a five-out save for the Diamondbacks, win it 3-2. Zach Greinke has won six consecutive starts. What a ball game! Heroes all over the field today, starting with Zach Greinke. Brad Ziegler with a five-out save. Peter O'Brien with a home run saving catch. Gene Segura with a great catch in center field. Michael Bourne with an outstanding defensive play in center. What a ball game. Brandon Webb all set to break it down for you. He's standing by with Todd Walsh. Todd. All right, Steve, thank you very much, Brandon. Would you concur? This had a little bit of everything, didn't it? Absolutely. It was a lot of tight situations. It could have gone either way. D backs come ahead, though. Here's what I know the 21,374 that were here tonight are going to want to come back because this Absolutely. will leave with a great taste in their mouth. Certainly, we'll take a short break. When we come back to Chase Field, we will begin Diamondbacks Live. You know the drill by now. We hope we'll check in with Bob Brenly, Chip Hale, the manager of the Diamondbacks. Player reaction, Brandon Webb's analysis, and Jody Jackson on the field. And we believe we'll be talking on the field to the guy that recorded that five out save clutch performance from Brad Ziegler. So stick around. More to come here at Fox Sports Arizona. Diamondbacks win game one of three of the Dodgers. Diamondbacks Live is next.